AI chip stocks are collapsing, but did you notice yesterday that AMD fell less than half as much as NVIDIA? Why is that? Well, DeepSeek, the Chinese startup that's claiming that they can do what the big AI companies do for 95% less money, which means 95% less chips, could actually be brilliant for AMD. If you're short on time here, people are only buying these very expensive NVIDIA chips because they're the most powerful. If we don't need that much power, we could actually use cheaper chips. Who makes cheaper chips than NVIDIA? Guess who? AMD. But if you don't want to stick around, at least watch the end of this where I will give you a warning that this is not the time to do what you think you want to be doing with AMD stock. We also have AMD earnings coming up on the 4th of January, the most important date for AMD investors this year. And it'll reveal if their MI300 AI chip can actually challenge NVIDIA's dominance. So the stock's future hinges on three key metrics here that I'll break down in the next few minutes. Data center revenue growth, design wins, how good are those chips, and their roadmap for AI execution. Now, maybe you're already in the stock, maybe you're thinking about being in the stock. Well, this is the most important thing. So I'm going to put this at the beginning of the video here. If you look at our stock chart here, right? this is just in tradevision.io, the software that we built. Get yourself a free week's trial to it if you want to get some real data and get our breakouts and everything else. But, and what do you see? Well, you see a stock. Really, all you got to do is you got to connect the tops and then connect three of them, more or less. It doesn't have to be super precise, but you get the idea. And what is that line showing you? Well, that line is showing you, I'm going to make it easy for you, it's going down. Right? And then you could actually draw another line, which would connect the more recent highs, which show you that it's actually going down faster. So is that a stock we want to buy? Well, some people can say, oh, it's a bargain. It's amazing. And I see those videos out on YouTube. They are dangerous. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I'm sure they have great intentions and all of that, but they don't actually understand what Wall Street traders do, which I was very lucky enough to learn inside an investment bank. Turn on the 150-day moving average line down here. MA stands for moving average. Just toggle on the 150. And you see that little purple line there? And you see that we are where? Are we above it or below it? We're below it. What happens below the 150-day moving average line? It stocks. Do you ever buy a stock below the 150? Not if you've got a shortish time horizon. Now, if your time horizon is 20 years, maybe, but yours probably isn't. And I would actually say that only really applies to an index. So yes, you can buy an index below the 150-day moving average line because it's cheap, but a stock can actually go to zero. An index can't. That's the big difference. And then the second thing we have, the 50-day moving average line, which is that yellow line here, which way is it sloping? Is it going up or is it going down? Well, it's going down hideously. Do we ever buy a stock on a sloping down 50-day moving average line? We do not. Now, th those might sound like random rules to you, but they're the very foundation of how the most successful investors out there have made billions and billions of dollars. And this wasn't invented yesterday. This has been around for probably 40, 50 years. And it's the system and the structure that I follow that makes me a lot of money and that makes thousands of my students money. If you want to learn it for free, then what do you have to do? Well, I actually made something rather special for you. I remade my masterclass into a short masterclass, which is now only about 10, 15 minutes long. And I will teach you, get straight to the point, teach you the exact rules that I use to avoid being a bag holder like this. Because what you want to be doing is you want to be buying here and then you want to be exiting where? You want to be exiting there. And you might think you can only do that with hindsight. No, you can do that every single day. The chart tells us where the risk sits. When the risk is kicking in, like it has here where I'm circling this in red, we get out. And then would you have bought any of the stuff on the way down? No, probably not. No, I don't think we would have done. So that would have been a very, very nice profitable trade. And then you would have simply put your money into something else. And I know everybody now is FOMO buying AMD because it's the next NVIDIA. Well, most of the time, Sorry to be a bearer of bad news. The next NVIDIA is NVIDIA. The next Tesla is Tesla, right? The next Microsoft is Microsoft. The next Google is probably Google. You know, you can next, Amazon is probably Amazon. You kind of get the idea most of the time. Now, does that mean we can still make money out of AMD? Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean I'll never buy AMD. Doesn't mean that. I'll probably end up buying AMD at some point because at some point it'll bottom out and then it's going to rally. And at that point we buy it. 
and it's done that often. And why does it do it often? Because chip stocks are cyclical. These are not buy and hold forever stocks. Chip stocks go through cycles. There are cycles where new chips come out, all the big companies buy them, and then they've got them, and then they buy less. And then new chips come out, and they buy them, and then they buy less, and that sort of thing. And at the moment, we're in a boom cycle for chips, but AMD isn't participating. So you can see it on the chart. You can see the cycle, right? It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, right? So where do you want to be buying? Well, it's pretty simple, isn't it? You want to be buying here and here. And then where do you want to exit? Well, you want to exit there and you want to exit here. And this is a cycle when it goes down that we typically don't participate in, unless you like to short a whole other story. So chart out of the way, because this is important. But let's look at what's going to decide whether or not AMD is going to blow up next week in a good way. And I do think DeepSeek does generally provide them with an opportunity. I'll show you exactly what numbers matter, where to look for hidden signals and their guidance, and most importantly, what it means for your investment strategy in AMD and all chips for that matter. Ready? All right, let's break it down piece by piece. Now, you may already know this, but NVIDIA's H100 chip, the hopper, is the gold standard in AI computing, and even the bankers have realized it. HSBC has just downgraded AMDs not once, but twice. They're basically saying, show us the money and the big tech companies are now expected by some analysts to start slowing down their spending in late 2025. Microsoft, Amazon Web Services, they've just been an absolutely, you know, spending binge, really. They've just been shopping like mad. And the market's starting to wonder, will it last? And all the analysts I've spoken to are projecting a slowdown in data center spending. And that's despite their partnership with DeepSeek, right? AMD chips are actually powering DeepSeek. We don't know what else DeepSeek's got, but certainly they've got some AMD chips. So they're kind of in the right place, but the market's getting impatient. You see, they want these partnerships to translate into revenue growth, not just sort of fugazi. But what are most analysts missing here? Well, first, let's briefly summarize why AMD's market sentiment feels like this roller coaster. Right? Analyst price targets are ranging from $110 at $5 below where we are right now to $250. Those are just analysts who are probably still asleep from last year. So what are the bullish arguments? Well, AMD CPUs, they're solid, yeah, very solid. Right? Horizon, the Epic processors, they're not just competing, they're actually leading in many benchmarks. And their partnerships, well, there's Dell, there's HP, there is Lenovo, those are big long-term relationships that could generate revenue streams for years. And unlike some tech companies that put all their eggs in one basket, AMD has spread their bets across different markets. CPUs, GPUs, gaming consoles, embedded systems, you name it. But, and this is a big but, the bears do have some valid concerns. NVIDIA just dominates the market. It isn't just about my market share, it's about owning the developers. You see, the developers are all used to NVIDIA's CUDA system now. They understand that they like to work with it. So to get people out of that, it's a little bit more difficult. And if, again, that's an if, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, and Google start slowing down their spending towards the end of the year, probably not right now, it could put a dent into AMD's ambitions. Unless it actually becomes a real thing, that we don't need GPUs this powerful anymore because DeepSeek's perform some sort of magic, and then it is going to become a question of price, cost. And well, AMD is certainly cheaper right now, AMD's offerings than NVIDIA's. Now, NVIDIA could obviously slash their prices, but that would hurt their margins, it would definitely hurt the stock price. And if you think this through, these AI chips are selling for much higher margins than chips have done traditionally. So they're like a gold mine for the AI com chip companies. And those kind of high margins typically don't stick around because someone else is going to come along attracted by the high margins and do it nearly as well, but much cheaper. So even with NVIDIA dominating, there's still billions up for grabs, right? You can have, you know, that leading car, you can have that Tesla, but there'll still be lots of people who don't want to buy a Tesla. I'll tell you why, but they just don't want to do it. So they're going to buy something else. So I'm going to listen for two specific numbers here during the, the, the call. Overall data center growth rate. This one is really pretty crucial. And then a breakdown between CPU and GPU revenue. That'll tell us if they are gaining traction in the AI market or if they're just riding their CPU success and just hitting Intel over the head, which seems rather easy right now. And then we're going to look at design wins. One of the most crucial metrics in semiconductor investing 
When companies like Microsoft or Amazon decide to use their own chips, they're not just buying for the next quarter, they're making multi-year commitments. And these are the kind of decisions that take months, sometimes years of testing and validation. So let me give you some real numbers here. If AMD announces a design win today, it might not show up in revenues for three or four quarters. But when it does, it's like a snowball effect. First, you get the design win. Then the initial orders start flowing in. Finally, the product performs well and you see repeat orders and expansion and replacements because again, chips have to be replaced. So during this earnings call, listen out for that. Listen out for mentions of the hyperscale clients. Those are the big fish, the Microsofts, the Amazons, the Googles. Even a small design win with these players can mean hundreds of millions in future revenue, maybe even billions. So watch out for that. But really, even if you don't know anything about the earnings, if you don't want to read earnings reports, you haven't got the time, you haven't got the inclination, the chart tells you everything. The chart tells you the whole story, the whole sentiment by every single investor, every single bank, every single hedge fund, every single pension fund. And if you understand how to read charts, and I used to laugh at this, by the way, I was one of those guys, I was like, this is just made up nonsense. Someone's just drawing some lines. Who cares? This can't be what decides the market. But it does. It tells you what everybody is thinking, what everybody else knows. So you actually don't have to know it. All you got to look at is the, the nice little bar charts. So at the moment, the chart is saying, don't. That's my opinion. You might have another one. I don't think it's a bargain. This could go a lot lower. And if you just look at the last cycle, the last cycle ended at $55. The one before that ended at $37, right? This is a stock that is cyclical. We're in the downward cycle. Do we buy things in the downward cycle? No, we buy it when it becomes a breakout. How do we know it's a breakout? Well, we turn on our breakout indicator here inside Trade Vision. And, well, we haven't had a breakout for a while, but we had some on the way up here in the previous cycle. Um, and, and you could also use our trends if you wanted to, which, you know, over the last two years would have made you 32% versus minus 23% buy and hold. Because buy and hold on stocks like this is just a terrible idea, in my humble opinion. So get yourself the indicator, FelixFriends.org slash trade vision and we're making this insanely better every single day and every single week and secondly actually learn the rules just sit down now for 15 minutes learn the rules write them out your life will be changed forever that's what literally about thousands of people are telling me who are watching this head over to felix slash get free and get yourself some freedom all the best what if i told you that everybody's got everything about ai stocks wrong that's what Toledo just told me, and she is my chief financial analyst here.